Are you ready for a new week? With the weekly update. With the weekly update. Weekly update time. <laughs> Welcome back to another weekly update with Blaine and Katie. Your stop for information about Japanese YouTubers and news in Japan. So what's hit the YouTube stream this week? For our first video, Raina Scully visits one of the cheapest hotel chains for just $46 a night, the Apple Hotels. It's a very popular business hotel chain and Raina goes into all the very small nooks and crannies of this business hotel. From the closet-like bathrooms to the rooms that are just a bed. It's pretty cramped. Honestly, we usually end up picking business hotels through our stays in Japan just because A, it's really cheap, and B, it's just a place for us to crash. We're already tired from exploring and eating all the wonderful things of Japan. We just need a place to stay. So it's a really great place for you guys to go to if you're just needing a place to crash. And because of Japanese licensing laws regarding hotels, when you try to book an Airbnb thinking you're getting a deal, you're really not most most of the time. It usually ends up being about the same price getting an Airbnb versus getting a hotel. So just kind of balance out where the location is and what kind of amenities you get there. Then we had Paulo from Tokyo taking us on a little tour of the Japanese healthcare system. And one thing you'll notice if you watch any sort of amount of anime is that anytime somebody's sick, they go to the hospital or they go to the doctor. And, and for us here in America, where going to the doctor can be hundreds of dollars, even if you've got insurance, it could be expensive. That's kind of a crazy idea. And so it was really insane to watch him go in and get these bills for what, $3 like, for yeah, one of them. 380 yen for yeah, a doctor visit. Like it's less crazy. than five bucks for doctor visits and checkups. <laughs> it sort of starts to make sense why they go so often. Mm -hmm. And hearing his take on it and some of the times where he actually really had to go for some intense Surgeries surgery and, and stuff, that his bill, even after all of the work that he had done, was still so cheap compared to what we would have to be paying over here. And you know, that opens us up, of course, to a whole <laughs> healthcare system debate that we can have in the comments. So if you do want to go down there and start talking about one way or the other, just try to keep it civil, all right? And this week, we finally received a well-packaged non-Lime Street video from Only in Japan, where he goes to a monkey park reserve in Oita City near Takasaki Yama. And at the monkey park reserve, they're just trying to keep a harmonious atmosphere between the monkeys and the humans. Mainly, they feed them on this Crazy chase potato spree. Wagon potato chase spree. Wagon potato chase spree. <laughs> Just to keep the monkeys fed so they don't end up going into the local farmer's land and destroying all their hard-earned crop. It's a really good deal for the monkeys. They get free food and we keep ours. As a bonus, he mentions that if a monkey happens to run through your legs while you're there, it's good luck. And this video is super hilarious. You guys should check it out. Tokyo Creative brought us the entire Japanese McDonald's menu. And Ooh. Emma paired up with Aya, a famous Japanese food eater, to tackle the whole thing. And boy, did they tackle it. I mean, I tackled it. Really. Yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> she really did most of the eating. I think the craziest thing to me is that they bought the entire menu. They had to pre-order it, and it cost mm. them uh, $170, roughly. Yeah. To try to do the same in America is a $250 minimum. Just buying the burgers alone on the McDonald's menu in America cost you about $140. And even though Aya eats 20,000 calories in one sitting, a.k.a. like 10 days worth of food, it still makes you want to go try to eat all of the Japanese McDonald's that you possibly can because there's all these fun new things that come out every so often that we don't get in America. So maybe don't eat it all in one sitting, but you guys should, when you're in Japan, you should definitely go try McDonald's. It's an experience. And if you guys have been to Japan and tried some of the amazing McDonald's foods there, let us know what you liked, what you didn't like. Also, I have to pat Emma on the back for being so friggin' relatable with her skirt unbuttoned. Hashtag not all heroes wear capes. Then we had Ask Japanese sending Kathy Cat into the street to ask Japanese people what they think of Canada legalizing weed. And to be honest, a lot of the responses were exactly what you would expect. A lot of people didn't want it to happen or thought it would be a bad idea. Others think that the idea of being able to like have a country where it's legal and then someone could get hooked there and come back and then they wouldn't be able to get it, that would be a terrible thing. What's interesting there is that the Japanese rule is that they aren't allowed to smoke if they are in a foreign country 
country, they cannot partake in cannabis because they are still under Japanese rule. We actually had a Japanese guest with us, and one of the things in our packet when she came was they aren't allowed to smoke weed, they aren't allowed to be around it, anything like that. Because we come from Washington, where it's been legal for how long like, now? It's been legal for six years. About six years of, yeah. of it being legal in our state. So it's one of those things where it's almost more just treated like alcohol, where mm -hmm. there's rules for it and rules against it. And one consistency across all the people that she was talking to was that people are going to go crazy and there's going to be all these problems with society. And I can tell you coming from a place where it is legal that <laughs> people don't really go crazy and it's it's no different really than the same number of people who would get drunk and drive that would get high and drive. And, and mm -hmm. people are going to do that. And if they do that, they're going to get in trouble. They're going to get arrested. And people who can do it responsibly get to enjoy it. And my biggest thought watching this video was more Japanese have a very specific stereotype about reading the room, about how everybody has to read the atmosphere before they say something or give an opinion. And so when you have something that's less of an opinion and more of the rules, how likely are they to actually say, oh, maybe it would be okay when the government has deemed it to be not okay. So how many of these people, is this their actual opinion personally, or is this the opinion that they've gleaned from society around them? So I find that kind of interesting because they were fairly consistent with how they were saying, oh, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. Well, I will say one guy definitely said very uh, cautiously, I would be curious to try it as he's like pushing away the mic from his face. Kind of being open-ish. So definitely go check out that video. Leave her a comment below discussing what you think about the Japanese view of cannabis. I know when I was there, a lot of the comments were just saying, oh, these people are ignorant, they're ignorant, they're ignorant, they don't know what it's like, which maybe they are because they've never really looked into it. However, I'm more curious to see what you guys think after watching the video, if they're giving their own honest opinion or if they're giving the society atmosphere opinion. And now it's time for the lightning, lightning round. round. Chris Akino took us along with his family through his trip through Mie Prefecture, where they ended by karaokeing the night away. And I think dad had the most fun. Ask Japanese Kathy Cat went to Osaka and showed us all around the city of things to do. She got some awesome takoyaki from this Obasan who is super cute and has been doing it for 59 years. And she also gave her one of her hairpins and it was a really special moment. Currently, Hannah takes us to Minawa to show us the first designer ryokan in Japan. Liz Kelly explains to us the collector culture of Japan by going to the A Peach Cafe in Omote Sando where they show us all the amazing merchandise and cafes, sweets and deliciousness and how they also play up the social media marketing factor. Best Ever Food Review Show takes us on an amazing seafood journey, my favorite of which was a giant tuna head that was roasted for two hours. Definitely check this one out. And finally, Tokidoki Traveler gives us her experience in how to declutter in Japan and how to give a stuffed animal a funeral when you no longer need him. So tell me, what's going on in video game world, Blaine? Sony, the developers of the PlayStation, had their stock drop 9%. Now this has caused some people to speculate as to whether or not the giant tech conglomerate might actually break up their very disparate regions, as their financial sector is really causing a drag on the whole company. And in other news, Nintendo has decided they're going to open up a Nintendo shop in Tokyo. Currently, the only Nintendo shop in the world is in New York City, and so they've decided to finally open one in Japan to help push Switch sales and a lot of other merchandise there. And this is going to be opening up this fall, so definitely keep an eye out there if you plan to be in Japan around this fall time. And now it's time for... News, News in, in Japan. Japan! This week, the Japan Meteorological Corporation released its Sakura Cherry Blossom viewing maps. As a broad stroke, dates start in the south around March 20th and go all the way up to Hokkaido around May 10th. So get ready for some cherry blossoms. In not technically Japanese news, but it's a little culturally related, Ariana Grande got a tattoo on her hand which read Shichirin, which is a Japanese charcoal grill and not seven rings as she intended it to be. Which, for all intents and purposes, I do love my Japanese charcoal grilled foods. Yeah. My yakitori, onigiri, yakiniku. We just found that funny. The Musashino Clean Center has recently opened up a pop-up bar where there's this large viewing window that looks into a garbage pit. And don't try click away yet because there's a reason for this. The bar is called Gomi Pit, or literally Trash Pit. It's to help shed light on how the waste is processed 
and shows people how much and what kind of waste they're producing. Would you guys have a drink where there's only a piece of glass between you and a large trash pit? If yes, let us know what you would drink while staring at trash being processed. Irish trash can. Yes! <laughs> Seven dead oar fish have appeared on Japanese shores, and it's causing a bit of a commotion on Japanese social media. The appearance of an oar fish is usually a harbinger of doom, as it's been reported. And this has caused people to fear the possibility of a coming earthquake or tsunami. Oar fish are a deep, eel-like sea creature that usually stays well, well under the surface of the water, but when they get sick or they're starting to die is when they'll rise up and currents will deposit them on beaches. And throughout history, Japan has linked their appearance on shore to an impending disaster of some kind. In Japanese mythology, they are linked to the yokai Jinja Hime, which means shrine princess. And these were messengers of the sea god, who is the dragon of the sea. And her appearance originally was to tell people, oh, there's a famine coming, so you gotta prepare. And since then, this fish that is a very similar design to what this guy purported to see all those years ago has been held as a bad omen of things to come. And this sudden appearance of seven of them has caused a lot of people to start to worry about, hey, are we gonna get another earthquake? Because there's a bunch of tales even recently of people seeing them before Fukushima. And while there is no scientific evidence of their appearance being linked to anything terrible, there's gotta be some reason that we've suddenly seen seven of them appear. Let me know in the comments below what you think that might be. And now it's time to put your here learning caps on because it's time for the kanji of the week. This week's kanji is a single kanji character and that is kusuri. Kusuri just means medicine and often you'll see it outside in either hiragana or katakana as well, telling people that it's a pharmacy and this is a place to get medicine. And since Paolo from Tokyo talked about his health experiences in Japan, we've had uh, some of our own issues and we haven't prepared necessarily for having like upset stomachs or things like that in Japan. So we've had to go to the pharmacies and get some medicine there. We would simply just tell them like, ah, itai, and like, point at our stomachs or what hurt or our head if we had a headache and generally they'll get the idea across and be able to help you proceed from there so hopefully that helps you guys along your trips if you come into some problems with your health and that's our show for this week you guys as always links are in the description below for all the news and youtube videos we mentioned this week thank you as always for liking commenting and subscribing and join us tonight. We're going to be live streaming some video games. So join us if you need uh, some help with planning your trip to Japan.